Fueled by all of the images you've seen recently of train derailments in towns in Ohio, in Anacortes and elsewhere, toxic fumes being spread out into the atmosphere. There's a new bipartisan bill making its way through Congress right now to try to contain these derailments and make the trains safer. In Washington state, same thing. A new law could happen to make railways safer. We'll have more on that in a minute because we've learned there's very little that we know in the public about what is in these trains as they pass through your community. We have 3,200 miles of freight track in Washington state on the west side of the state all the way to Spokane. And last year, 32 derailments were reported. These could be anything from a wheel falling off of a track to something much more serious. In Whatcom County, we found one small town that knows about fiery derailments all too well, and they hope more is being done so it doesn't happen again. Nine on one. Yeah, hi. Um, their train just derailed and caught fire. Just days before Christmas. It's flaming like crazy. 2020. Train derailment on fire. It's right in cluster. Dozens of witnesses report a violent incident here at Milepost 111. We have had a train wreck and a fire. 10 rail cars operated by Burlington Northern Santa Fe jumped the tracks for unknown reasons in Custer, Washington. What's in the tanker? Can you tell? It looks like oil, like those black round oil. Things. Hold on for the fire department. Three of those cars burst and nearly 30,000 gallons of crude oil caught fire. See how different they look. Some 500 feet away. Looks sideways. Jenny Rich was in her glass shop and knew instantly something was wrong. Everything got black because there was a big black smoke. Rich and the rest of the Custer community was forced to evacuate. It was pretty much chaos for a while there. You know, the, the, the trains were all over the place. I don't think it came to as a much of a surprise to anybody around here that it happened. We, were, we just got lucky that it wasn't worse than it was. No one was hurt or killed by the derailment that day. But for the dozens of Washington communities along the tracks like Custer, derailments are a real concern. <laughs> But there's very little officials know about what is contained in a passing train day to day. The railroad companies are not regularly required to disclose what toxic chemicals they may be hauling, with the exception of crude oil. 36 rail companies operate some kind of freight in Washington. The company at the center of the two violent derailments in Ohio this year is not one of them. Around 30 train derailments happen every year here in Washington state, some big, some are small. The one here in Custer had minimal impact, thankfully. But what if it had happened in a more populated area? The same trains that pass through Custer also pass through cities like Seattle. Law does require that hazmat rail cars properly mark the load they're carrying for all to see. And a new state law requires at least two crew members now operate every train. This is a rural issue, and rail safety is critical. In the state legislature, Senator Patty Cooterer of Bellevue is working to take safety a step further by requiring paid sick leave for all rail operators. When you have worker fatigue, you're going to have less reaction time. You're going to have problems with people operating this incredibly heavy uh, locomotive equipment, and you're prone to accidents then. The site of the oil train derailment in Custer was cleaned with no lasting impact to the environment, according to the Department of Ecology. This is what I was picking up off of everything. But still to this day, Jenny Rich finds an oily residue coating her art and shelves in her glass shop. And that's just not normal. And when that train whistle blows, the people of Custer think differently. It's a little worrisome. And like I said, I just always had a feeling something would happen there. Now that bipartisan bill being considered in Congress right now would require full disclosure of these hazardous materials that the trains are carrying at all times so communities know what's passing through their town. I asked BNSF about this and they tell me the company has made significant investments in safety and technology to ensure, quote, 99.9 percent .9 of all hazmat materials moved by rail reaches its destination without incident. Now, in the event of a derailment or a spill, these companies then have to disclose, of course, what was spilled mm -hmm. so these fire departments and emergency responders can act accordingly. But right now, I think a lot of people, especially in Ohio and Augustine, uh, want to have more of an alert if some chemical like that is passing through. Absolutely, and when you're talking about more than 30 train derailments that happened in our state last yeah. year, those communities that have those trains coming through their areas are going to want to know yeah. in case that happens. 32 which is derailments a very real risk. last yeah. year, about 1,000 nationally, so mm -hmm. um, a little above average in Washington state in that respect. Great story, thank you, Jake.